Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we are sitting here in studio on election day taping. Um, we just did a big Facebook Live, so if you want to see what we had to say about um, primary day, you can go back and see if we were right on any of the races. Um, but we're not going to talk about politics. Well, we are going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about elections because by the time you're seeing this, it it's will over. Be over, um, and we will know. But there is with this school oh, charter commission. Yep. For those of you following along, just to bring you up to speed, so there was this bill that was introduced earlier this year by Pat Long, right? That created the school charter commission for Manchester. It was a bill that, as far as I know, was not co-sponsored by anyone, and also didn't, as far as I could tell, go through like committee. Or it anything. went. It like, just like, passed like, it through. It, it came passed, out unanimous right? from everybody on a voice vote. Nobody. It so, like slid like, under. You know, like so, bills happen. So no one knows but okay fine this thing went through the bill is very badly crafted it says shall shall is not is, may and, right and basically says you shall have this new school charter commission and you shall elect them on today this date for and the you November shall 5th. and they shall make recommendations that will be on the ballot in 2020 and it, there's too many shells so 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 the long and the short of it is there was that thing right yep. so for the elections we had this separate ballot where people could vote there were 37 names on it you get to vote for nine people and when we watch this or we'll, we'll know talk who. about it next week right. we'll know right but then Oh, because of the way the language was drafted. Well, I, I felt like I dug through this enough that I'm kind of thinking. So in the bill that was drafted by Pat Long, it refers to RSA 49 something or other, which is the char the RSA that covers how to amend a charter. Okay, so that makes sense. And in 49C whatever, it says you can amend the charter and you can do this and all this stuff. And then that refers to RSA 669.19, which is... I don't even remember how towns elect their people <laughs> or something. Too many but, oh, people. Yes. but somewhere in there, it says in the other RSA, not in the bill, but the bill points to it, you know, um, that the filing period for electing the, this ch a, city, a charter commission has to start the fourth Wednesday before the election through the following Friday. So if you think about it, if election day is today, four Four weeks from tomorrow, back. back is when they would. The law is saying people could file to run, which the, of course would make which it impossible. impossible. So what happened was literally and... the the filing period would have ended on I think the seventh of October, or maybe that was the beginning of the filing period. It was crazy. They were already mailing samples. Absentee absentees. Ballots. So it, it it's like one of those things that you're like, I don't know how nobody ever noticed this before, but it's impossible to have a filing period that close to an election. So Mark Warden, who's a state rep in Ward 8, um, filed a lawsuit because he went down to file according to what the law says and was told he couldn't file for office because our filing period is back in July when it, that's when our filing period is. Um, so that went to court last week. So on Friday, they had a hearing, yep. right? And I think he was asking them to... To stop. Stop the, the charter. Election. Not the, the whole election, but the charter. The charter portion, because yep. they were like, well, you didn't follow your own laws yep. and rules. And so, you know, if we're going to be a nation of rules <laughs> people, then uh, the state has to follow them too. And, um, and so the judge was like, yep. I actually agree with you on the plain reading of the language on all of these things. Yep. If you put all the pieces together, yep. like Tammy just explained, <laughs> yeah, they did not follow the law. So we were like, yay. I mean, I was a little bit like, eh, you know, I mean, you know, we're, we're in the motions. And, and already. the judge basically laid out two options. They could either include Mark Warden's Warden. name on all the ballots, which again, is impossible at this point. Right. They would have to overnight print it. And well, even if that sounds to you like it's like, oh, just go to Kinko's and do it. No, they're you can't barcoded. do that. It's very, like, it's and, a very specific print. And absentee ballots have already been cast. Exactly. So you could, you would have some voters voting for on one ballot and other voters voting on other. Or they could just not do the election. Which I'm not sure how they could do that because there's a law that says, says we that shall. To, shall on this so day the on city, November 5th. Yes, that was ruling came out yesterday. So the so day before election. Morning, it came out. And the city filed an appeal to the Supreme Court. Yes. And the Supreme Court, the four Hampshire out of five, said the election will go on as is. 
So they My, stayed the other order, and they said, look, we're not sure what's going on, but, but we're just going to do it the way we are doing it. Go ahead for now, so, and then we'll figure it out after If I that. have to guess, two things. One, I'm going to still go back that the le- the law that Pat Long bo- fit, wrote says um, that we shall amend the school charter, which, wait for it, guess what we don't have in Manchester? We don't have a school <laughs> charter. So I'm dying to see them make recommendations to amend something that doesn't exist. Right. That's one thing. The second thing is, I'm pretty sure the election results for the Charter Commission for today will be challenged in court and will be thrown out. Because there's no way, there is a reason that Mark Warden should have been, according to bad laws that have nothing to do with the city clerk's office. The city clerk was do, you know, doing they what- They were just following doing what their they were told. Right. Yeah. And, um, but if the law says the filing period had to be here and the filing period wasn't at that time, then I think he is being kept from being on the chart. It, it's a mess. Bad laws. We have too many bad laws. Well, it's not even... It's, we just have too many laws. It's like, uh, you know, there was, I've talked about this in the past, but there's that guy who wrote the book, you know, three felonies a day. Yeah, yep. And I'm like, look, we're actually at the stage where just from a governance Government can't even follow like, the they, law. They can't, you know, put all the pieces of right. the puzzle together right. either. I mean, what I would love to see us do here in New Hampshire over the long term yep. is, you know, to actually use technology yep. to start to streamline some of this yep. stuff. And then for, you know, people in office should be looking at sunsetting right. stuff. So sunsetting if you introduce stuff and, a bill... Yep. You if I say I want, I don't even know, some crazy bill. I want to make the state bird, you know, the pigeon. And it passes. <laughs> it should sunset in six years. And in six years... It, it should not pass. <laughs> but I'm just saying, but in six years, some other legislature can right. say, do we really need the pigeon? Like, what do we do if this... Perfect, good example. If there, was, if there was sunsets on simple things. So our state, um, our state bird is the uh, purple finch. Yes. Which it is diminishing in population. Yes. So what if we no longer have purple finch? So here's the thing also that people never want to talk about, <laughs> but those lovely, lovely wind turbines that all the green folks are so yeah. are they killing excited those? about are killing the birds. But, yeah. you know, let's not mention that. Um, but if there was a sunset provision, I've always thought, because I've set, served in the legislature, we, you serve a two-year term. The first year is the budget. I would like the first year to be repeals and revisions yes. of existing law because i think that each committee that deals with a certain section of law the education committee deals with education laws the labor committee deals with labor laws you know it, they're these are the people who should be a little bit more knowledgeable they should be looking <laughs> that uh, that was a stretch of a statement knowledgeable they like should, that lady who yeah. said pri- f private and religious schools well, that's another day we'll do that okay. one next week um <laughs> But I think you could look at the laws and make sure they make sense because apparently in this election law, it doesn't make sense. That that filing period doesn't make right. sense. So we could spend a year sunsetting bills, cleaning up language to make sure that what we're saying in section A matches what works in section B. I know and honestly, you can use tech. Tech, tech to that find exists it. today yes. to actually solve those things. Well, and, and that's going to be like a big and thing. Like for a me. good example that we had is in labor. Uh, me and Keith Murphy were both serving on the labor commission or the labor committee, and there was a law that in one place for employers said an employee is this. And then over here for unemployment said an employee is something like there were two completely conflicting definitions of who was an employee. So if you were following one, you were violating the other. And that's, that was nuts. But anyway, so let's get rid of some laws. That should be things that you'll think about next year when we're doing state rep races. Another crazy thing. And I've been talking about people that to, this about people all weekend in the stores. Like, in the, I love to talk to people like <laughs> in the Walgreens or whatever. Um, how about government doesn't dictate when we have celebrate holidays? How? <laughs> how? Raise, okay, it may, maybe, but like genuinely, maybe this is just me. No, it isn't because but, I've been but, talking but, to people. But I'm like, okay, so so just by way of example, here in Manchester, the Manchester PD, I think, or maybe it was the city. No, it's the Manchester it's, police. It's right? the chief of police. We're like, and eh, the weather is going to be bad. No trick or treating for you, citizens, on like on the trick or treating night, Halloween, right? Halloween thirty first, right? So they 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 work themselves in a frenzy. I mean, there was there was weather forecast, but I'm fully but confident. Here's the thing 
guys. It's like, so if there's bad weather on Christmas, do we move Christmas? If there's bad weather on Easter, Santa do we come. move? Well, you know, how so about like, people oh, celebrate like, holidays just, when they want to celebrate holidays? Yeah. Well, Why I mean, I document? decreed it as Halloween. Yeah. Like, we'll just make yeah. it a whole week. Well, and the Halloween. crazy thing, if, if you were in Florida or something and didn't see this, is they came, they postponed nighttime trick-or-treating on Halloween when trick-or-treating should happen. Now, what happens? Like, if you were out trick-or-treating, do I they arrest you? I don't know. Like, 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 like do wait, they come? This and, is what and Dan, I don't know procedurally this, because there are a lot Dan of Jews says, to, like, tackle you from behind and drop you on your because head. Because Dan's such a smart person. Dan says to me, he goes, so why do we give the chief of police the authority on one day a year to control whether kids are in the neighborhood. I know! It makes so no sense So can they go around the neighborhood? Or is it illegal for kids to knock on your door on May 4th? I don't know. Because we have to apparently have permission to do it on October 31st. And so people also back home, if it sounds like we're being callous, please understand that like everyone here, like we care oh, about kids, yeah. we care about safety. We just also believe, and I shouldn't even say no, we, you I can, say I'm for pretty me, sure. that we are creating this class of kids who are literally and looking to government for everything. Huddled to, yep. to, 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 like, to stupidity, right? Well, I mean, and, and one of the things, there's this great, um, uh, I think she's like a, a free range kid person. Her name's Laura, uh, Leonore Skenezi. She spoke at a, a conference I went to once. And she says, like, part of actually something like Halloween is actually a growth it is. and learning experience because for children. Because you, 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 you see scary scared, things. It's you're a little tricky. Dark, you got to go knock like, on somebody's to, door. So, so it's actually it's a good teaching thing. you right. how to push your boundaries, right. right? Instead of being like, oh, my God, you are so delicate <laughs> that we can only let you get candy from people you know in a parking lot where we will put everyone because we have to control everything. We can't control and, and humans. You know what? what we should be doing is telling them the truth. And the truth is the world can be a little scary. Yeah. But you know what? It's manageable. Well, and... Like you don't have to be know, so what? scared if you in, understand how the world works. In this week's example... Okay, so there was weather forecast that could have been too windy or too rainy for, ki for children... To maybe be outside just to get candy. But shouldn't mom and dad be figuring out if it's too dangerous outside for your kid to be going? I mean, do, do, we, need the, do we need the government to say, you're not capable. No, no, we don't. No, I'm saying <laughs> you're not capable of deciding what's safe for your children. Right. We have to decide it for you. And we think it's only going to be safe on Sunday between 2 and 4. And the irony of it all was, the was that was it was worse. 65 degrees yeah. in Balmy and the weather was perfectly fine. And all of us that have light up freaking decorations for Halloween night didn't get to put our decorations out because you can't see them at 2 to 4. And even worse... There was high school football games that were canceled from Friday night because it was so windy. They were on Sunday. So they tra had, they uh, scheduled Halloween during football games for high school. So you're making it so that parents can't take their kids trick or treating because they got to be at their older kids' football I mean, game. So and here's, I mean, here's, here's, here's the point. Stay, stay out of it. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. And just let's let the world and Figure time and calendars and life progress in a normal fashion well, I mean, without having one group of people be like, we are literally going to dictate. Well, I mean, I get, the, I get this public safety thing, you know, like, but then just have the chief of police put out a reminder. Don't forget, it's Halloween. Make sure you keep an eye out because there's going to be kids trick-or-treating. I mean, that was always the message. Be careful if you're out driving tonight because there's going to be kids. And on Halloween... I mean, do kids but, even trick-or-treat anymore? I had got like six. But the whole thing is, is if when you don't have it on Halloween... No one. Nobody's thinking about well, trick-or-treaters. So, so you're zooming up Varney Street and there's little kids out there in costumes. Well, so and, and and it's just, I mean, it just, it doesn't make stay, sense. Government, just, stay out of stupid know. stuff. You don't need to dictate when we, we celebrate holidays. We do not need so much of a nanny state. We, we, just, don't. Genuinely we just don't. We genuinely don't. You know what? And, and, and the worst is, I mean, the nanny isn't even Mary Poppins. No. I mean, the nanny no, is just, kind of like some scary dude. You know, so, so I mean, I guess, uh, can we talk a little bit about the use of force in the King's Court? Sure. 
Okay, so sure. um, I, I wrote a blog, which people can read at CarlaGarrick.com, where I just ask a question, and I think the viewers back home should genuinely ask themselves this question as well. How do we feel about the police, law enforcement officers, being authorized to use force that if you did it to your child You'd would be charged with a crime. Would be child abuse. If a stranger did it to your child, it would be assault. But somehow we think it's okay when a police officer tackles a child who is clearly walking away from him. And there's a video that you can see this happened on Friday at Keene High School where he is walking out of the bathroom and I am 100% sure that the kid based on the way he's walking was cheeky or rude or oh, I'm something sure, but he that was, still doesn't he was make probably it okay. like you know In, but my question is once again if your teenager is cheeky or rude to you are you allowed to tackle them drop them on their neck jump on their chest pummel them and you know no. like are you allowed to do that so so i am very upset about it because i don't think that this is the way we as Granite Staters should go. Like, I don't think, like, creating these schools where we say this level of use of force is okay to do against our own children. It is not right. And yeah. I don't care. I mean, I get so much hate mail about this kind of stuff, but I know in my heart I'm right. And I want you, you back home, to really wonder about why we why would say it's okay for a group of people who wear uniforms and carry guns to hurt people when we're not allowed to do it. Right. And, uh, you know, like, we're, I didn't see the video, but you described it to me. And I'm, you know, I, I can be a little flippant sometimes. I remember as a child, I might have had a little bit of an attitude. There's a, such a stark difference between a flippant teenager in school giving somebody attitude, right? And if a, co a kid in school... Uh, 16 year old kid walked up to a cop and cold cocked him in the head. But they, that's an no, assault. No, but I'm saying that's what I'm saying. saying. There's a difference. There this is child a child right. was walking away. So it just it doesn't as a matter starting what. point, I feel like, at least from a, from a, 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 a common law perspective, I'm pretty sure the rule, the old timey is rule, if that if all of us were like, if we didn't have all the laws, we'd be like, that seems like a good rule of thumb. Is if, if someone is fleeing, away. you don't get to like be super aggressive and physical. Like it's wrong to shoot someone in the back. <laughs> it is wrong to attack a child from behind. Even yeah. though, and this is the part that makes me mad. So today, that was a very quick ruling. They said, oh no, we looked at the video. You know, we, we're, we're going to say this is entirely... Uh, a justified procedural use of force, it complies with our procedures. So my question also is, wow. can we see these procedures, right. please? Um, and if so, because it's not a law, like none of us have signed off on this. We don't know actually when, like what is the line? I mean, does the procedure say you are allowed to shoot people in the back? Right. Does the procedure right. say the procedure you're allowed to it. tackle right. people from behind? Does the procedure say you're allowed to put people and... I mean, this happens, so we know, I guess, the procedure does it in a chokehold and right. kill him. Right. So it's just, like, what are we doing? Why would we allow people, one group of people, who have a monopoly on force? Why but would I think we let goes, them I think it, hurt people? I think this is the same mentality as the Halloween thing. We have people. We have a... We have... You know, I always look at generational things. You know, like, I'm in this slice, and then there's another... You know, there's all these slices... But when we look to government as a whole to make all of our decisions for us and fix all of our problems for us, and we depend on government for everything, and then we're also in, it carries on, we are saying, well, if you say that I'm wrong and tackled me, I, sh I must have been wrong, which isn't how people should think, but I do think it's all... Well, We've well, gotten too used to the government saying, you must, you shall. I mean, I do think, yes, I think that that is part of the problem. But then I also think that let's look at schools, right? What is a school? A school is literally like a place where government has 100% control. Yep. I mean, you know, yep. I guess a school and a prison, not to compare the two. So, I mean, you know, this is, the school now has metal detectors. So do prisons. Yep. 
uh, schools, you uh, apparently can now get attacked from behind. <laughs> uh, you know, for you probably a, get all the <laughs> drugs you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, and all of those things. And so, so I spoke to uh, a, a couple of people in the past month or so who said, you know, one of their real aha moments was when they realized there was this huge cognitive dissonance between what you're told. Right. So, so we're told it's America, it's the land of the free, we have the constitutional rights, um, you know, the individual is supreme, the, the state is supposed to be subservient to us, they're supposed to, you know, right. y- y- give us, you know, just um, protect our rights, not people, give us right. our rights, protect our rights, and it's a very limited role. So this is what we're told. And then... <laughs> We create these things, and we're like, you have none of these rights, but America. And I'm just like, how how does that make sense? Like, these kids were like, yeah, you know where my aha moment was, was I, I was in school, and they would communally punish us. If another kid did something wrong, everyone gets punished. I'm and like, it's like, wait a minute. Mm, is it that? Like, I don't know. Does That's it not come good. out of, like, a, a, I'm pretty sure that that comes out of, like, some... Bad, bad regimes <laughs> toolbook, right? Oh, and and so anyway, so I just wanted to get that off my chest. I think that everyone should deeply, deeply question why we are granting authority to a certain group of people to do harmful things to other human beings that we as ordinary people would not be allowed to do. I know. See that? All right, let's talk about feel something a little else. Better now? I do. <laughs> uh, next week, we will definitely be talking about the state rep who did say F all the private schools, um, partially because state rep Heidi Hamer of my ward, um, she was one of those people, they, they named two um, state reps who liked her face, because this is oh, not a wow. Facebook quote or a Twitter or something, and um, this state rep, I don't even remember the name. It doesn't matter. I'll come up with it next week. Um, she serves on the education committee, and she made this really long post about how you know f public how only public schools can provide for kids and f all the private schools and so maybe- and so there's Heidi Hamer and somebody else liking it and I'm like great so my state rep thinks we should f all the school can I, can I ask you a question so sure. so when we look at uh, tech or other sectors right then people seem to fully understand that monopolies are not necessarily right. good, right? right? Because when we have a monopoly, what happens? Like prices you, go up and price, quality goes down. Yes. So, do you think it would be fair to say that if we only had public schools, we would prices have a, would go up and quality would, would go, go down. down? That would yes. So I, I I actually honestly believe that if we had more private schools, our public schools would, would be, be mo- so much better. And all these people who want these jobs in these public schools would have great, better jobs because. The and whole quality, and they, they so all so important to say, right? Because but they don't. But everybody, like, but they're afraid to let go of a little bit of the money. What about the three dollars? I might not have that three dollars. But maybe you would have a, like a vastly better quality of living, or maybe you'd be able to pick the students you work with. Maybe you only work well with visual learners, right. and maybe you could have a class of that. And maybe you know, here's the thing: like people get so set in their ways, and it's actually unhealthy. It's like. Um, there's there's brain science that will tell you if you just look at something one way, you kind of form this loop in your brain mm-hmm. that then you're like, this is the only way it could be. It's the same problem that we see with people who suffer from addiction, certain mental yeah. health problems, depression, anxiety, all of those things, right? And it's like, so you have to skip that, that, that little loop out a little bit. And so instead of people being like, I'm not anti-school, I'm, I'm pro-learning, I'm right. pro-education, I'm pro-happy right. kids. Right. And I'm like, what we're doing right now doesn't seem to be making anyone happy, except there's a small group of people who are like clinging to, if it's not this way, then, then we're and it's all- like, but what, what if we can change it and things would be better for everyone? I don't, Why can't I don't, we do because, that? I'll be the cynic because the t- the, cause labor unions don't want that. No, they don't. And, and, I they, would, I and would, they feed information, unfortunately, to their membership. And, and honestly, I will tell every teacher, if you're a teacher and you're watching this, please go find out what your union leader's salary is. Yeah, because I bet he's making way more money than you. Please go find out what your uh, principal and all the administrators in your district yeah. are making in terms of salary and benefits. And then let's come back and talk, because I think we could probably eliminate a lot of the red tape and get you more money and make you more happy. And have better students. 
And better classes. Which is what we want. Which is what we want. <laughs> so, this has been fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tammy. No, like, oh my I'm God, like, this is fun. Like, I could just watch Carl all day. Um, so, it'll be interesting to, next week I would like to talk about that scenario with that state rep and see where that's going. Because I'm guessing by next week it may have, there might be a change. I think there's calls for her to resign or be removed from the education committee or who knows I what. mean, she should at least not serve on that no, committee. No. I mean, I don't uh, know. Maybe they needs... should put it on, like, health and human services. No. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'll have, we'll be able to tell you what the what the results from the election. Um, but in the meantime, Carla and I got things to do. We got polls to go visit and um, soup, to, soup hand to hand out and coffee to bring to people. Um, and we'll be back next week. We will indeed. Thanks That's all so we much. Got. Bye. Peace out, guys.